need to find a way to get Chick Stick Big Pole into the episode. How are we gonna do that? Hello, and welcome to How Make Film Good. <laughs> Hello and welcome to How Make Film Good, the sophisticated show where we teach you how to make film good. I'll be your host, Nicholas Mather, and uh, despite being a member of the prestigious Hipster Pictures, we will uh, deign to start with the basics first. Assuming you're not shooting for funniest home videos, your filming will need a certain degree of quality. This can be broken down into three main areas, sound, lighting, and stability. Sound is a critically important part of any film, unless of course you're starring Rodolfo Valentino. However, considering we live in the 21st century, you can have the best lit, steadiest shot film in the world, and if the audience can't hear what's going on, they're going to walk right out on you. Most professional outfits will actually record sound to a separate device and sync it together with the footage in post. If you're shooting with a DSLR, we really really strongly advise that you invest in a separate shotgun mic that can be mounted to the camera's hot shoe. This is what a DSLR sounds like. And this is what a shotgun mic sounds like. Now, it might not sound like too much difference to you now, but if you've got a lot of complex audio in a scene, it really does make a difference. Most semi-professional video cameras will have a shotgun mic attached. You may even consider a boom mic with a dead cat. If you have to film someone standing a considerable distance away, it's advisable to invest in something like a radio mic that allows you to record sound at quite a considerable distance. So you've got sound. That's a start. The next thing on our elements of filmmaking is lighting. Unfortunately, lighting is a lot easier to mess up than sound because there are two prime areas where you can go wrong. Number one is exposure and number two is the lighting of the scene itself. Especially crucial when filming with DSLRs to consider exposure in a scene because modern DSLRs don't have a lot of the exposure control that uh, larger cameras have, which leads to serious problems. The other concern you'll have is the lighting of a scene. Now professional lighting rigs retail for thousands on thousands of dollars which we of course don't all have lying around in our pockets. However, with a bit of creativity you can work the natural light of simply the sun using natural diffusers like trees or even the clouds to achieve the effect you want. This is an example of an unstable shot. Unless you're Michael Bay, Star Trek reruns or have an audience that enjoys motion sickness, this is not acceptable. Stability is also a major concern when shooting any film. If your shot wobbles all over the place, people are either too busy looking at Megan Fox's boobs or really annoyed at you. Now, stability is a little more difficult to achieve on a budget than some of the other things mentioned in this video. However, a tripod is definitely your first step to success. One of the best ways you can keep the camera stable on a budget is actually just to bend your knees. And so whilst walking with your knees slightly bent, you actually keep your waist at the same level, therefore keeping the shot more stable. This is the same shot again, with some basic stabilisation features in place. You'll notice it no longer looks like it's straight out of a Transformers movie. Other options, like shoulder rigs or steady cams, are a little more expensive and a little more niche, but get that real Hollywood motion look. This is a shoulder rig. As you can see, it's a fairly advanced piece of kit. Here on my left hand, I have a monitor that lets me see what the camera sees. And over here, I have a follow focus that allows me to adjust the focusing on the fly. On my right hand, I can slip it up under the uh, main camera grip and adjust the zoom of the camera, as well as toggle the recording on and off. Audio controls are here, and as you can see, we've attached the big boom mic that allows us to uh, have highest quality audio, along with I'm wearing a radio mic, so that you can hear me right now, that's rigged up onto the back of the camera. This also assists in the stability of shots, as discussed before with the bending of the knees and the slink walk. A combination of the camera's self-stabilizing features and a shoulder rig like this one allowed you to keep almost any shot stable and in focus. Well, that brings us to the end of the very first episode of How Make Film Good. Hopefully you're one step closer on your way to being able to make film good. Despite this being very early days for our YouTube channel, we are an established film company and we've done lots of gigs ranging from music videos to corporate stuff. So feel free to check out our website. If you've got any questions for us at all, please ask them in the comment section below and hit this button to subscribe to our channel for lots more filmy goodness, including another episode of How Make Film Good coming soon.